Hello everybody, we're living in a world right now where the context is that leaders left, right and center as a result of their choices and behaviors are being exposed in being discovered that they're walking in sin, hurting other people, abuse of power, sexual immorality. I mean, it's just so grieving in so many ways what we see. And the, one of the greatest tragedies is that church leaders are among those that are being exposed all over the world. And of course, that brings all of the body of Christ and Christianity into um, disrepute, so to speak, and is so damaging to the reputation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So how in the world do we respond in the midst of this kind of context? How do we respond if we're leaders? How do we respond if we're not in a leadership position, but we are subject to the choices and behaviors of leaders who are walking in all manner of ways that are just damaging, frankly, full on damaging to those that are around them. So it's just a joy, Kate and I are here together with Stuart and Lindley Allen who are the leaders of Healthy and Supernatural, a new team that we have in Catch the Fire to help us as a movement mm, yeah. to really address yeah. those very things that we're talking about. So we're going to have a conversation around this mm. pretty thorny subject. Yeah. Stuart and Lindley, it's great to have you here. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Yeah, and you know, I, I just feel that it's very timely that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us as a movement because we've got our own visibility around the world with many churches, ministries, missions, networks associated with us and many people associated with the move of God that came out of Toronto. So it's, it's broad scale. Mm -hmm. And I think at the moment people are looking at the body of Christ and saying, how could that have happened? How was it covered up for so long? What on earth are we doing to get our auditing and our review process, our training, mm. and you know, just policy around safety and where is the pathway for somebody that needs to blow a whistle or air a grievance? You know, People are looking and saying, what are we going to do better as the body of Christ? We certainly need to do better. Yeah. I think right now we're all confronted mm -hmm. yeah. with our loosey-goosey ways. Yeah. And I think it's a very, uh, I think it's a really good opportunity yeah. to shore up the banks of the river. Yeah. And you know, on a macro level and a micro level. Yeah. On your in, if you're a church leader, do a review. What do you have complaints processes? Do you have policies and procedures that not only just sit in a filing cabinet, but do everybody know what they are? Mm. Mm. Does everybody know what they are? And and how do we what is our code of conduct? Mm. You know, yeah. what are our expectations of mm. people? And I think that's a review process that we all need to be going through at this point. Mm. I think we're also dealing with humanity, the yeah. brokenness of humanity, and we can we cannot separate the yeah. man and the woman from from our call and function. But what's been exposed is the brokenness of the humanity. Yeah. So I think for me, in, in answering to part of your question, how do we respond? It's healthy to separate the man from the function. And yeah. or the woman from the function. So, yes, people have – it's come to light. Let's face it. It's come to light that in the past yeah. or present, there are ways of being and behaviors and decisions that people have made that are damaging not yeah. only to themselves, their people that they lead, their organizations, but it's also damaging to the reputation of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a look at um, our internal response to how we how do we now view the man or the woman? We need to be able to separate those two things mm -hmm. so we don't just go, this person, however many years ago, has done this, therefore all of their ministry is mm -hmm. now defunct oh. and invalid. Yes. I don't think that's godly. No. 
I think yes. there's, a, there's an opportunity for us to be mature in our response and go, let's minister, love, support, pray for the wounded in, yeah. in our body. Um, and yes, let's deal with them in a disciplinary way. But you don't have to burn their box. Mm, good point. Stu. Stu, what do you think? Mm. It's a big subject. And there's very there's a lot of different facets to it. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have the people that were affected, the, the victims of whatever mm -hmm. has transpired, mm -hmm. and they need particular care. Yeah. And there's a, a restoration process for them. Yeah. Uh, that needs to be followed. I think the body of Christ is focused too much on the person that's fallen, mm. and a lot of the attention has gone in that direction yes. to the neglect of those that have yes. been affected by that. I think we're waking up to that. Yeah. And but then there's also what Lindley's talking about that, you know, what the person that's fallen did is now no longer valid. But in that we're denying that the Holy Spirit flows through broken vessels. Yeah. yeah. And that's a all of us included. All of us included. And mm -hmm. I you know, I'd have to confess that as I look at some of the things that people have been called out for, I'm like, Oh gosh, do I do that? Yeah. Am I, you know, and I felt as a leader a little bit of a, oh, and it's brought fear to me as a leader as yeah. responding to actually what's happening around, you know, am I doing some of these things? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of need to bring, see humility begin to come through the body of yeah. Christ where we can open those pathways that you're mm -hmm. talking about, Kate, where we can say, you know, ask our team or, or have people come and have a look and a review and give place for our teams to have a look at how we are leading yeah. and how we're being. Yeah. And, you know, it's because we're not exempt. No. And even with the best intentions. And I know that I've had Im impacts on people's lives. Yeah. That wasn't mm. my intention. Mm. Right. But that's kind of how it's worked out. Yeah. And so you, there's a, you have to own all of that and be mm -hmm. humble enough to actually allow that to be come to the fore. And so there's definitely a humility response that's needed in the body of Christ and yeah. the leaders of the body of Christ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the body of Christ, humble enough to know actually I'm broken too. Yeah. And, I'm, and our leaders are just like us. Yeah. And leaders to go, actually, I'm not infallible. Yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. no. all that. No. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I'm. I feel like there's the humility of, is of such great worth. As you know, humility has no worthy opponent. Mm. So there's no, there's no way that humility can fail in that sense. Secondly, when we forgive, when we repent and we forgive, or we repent and receive forgiveness. Mm or we confess and repent and receive forgiveness. So there's the forgiveness, which is just so important, the forgiveness towards the, the man or the woman, but also the forgiveness within the heart of the man or the woman that's fallen, that's the leader, to forgive themselves. Mm -hmm. And then most especially all of us to remind ourselves that whether we're the victim or we're the perpetrator, that all of us, we live in the forgiveness of Jesus. Yeah. And that all of it, has been paid on the cross at the same mo in the same moment. And then thirdly, I think it's important for us to remember that trust and forgiveness are opposites. Yeah. And so <clears throat> just because we've forgiven a leader doesn't mean that we're being asked by God to trust that leader. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for us yeah. to not actually trust a person. And mm -hmm. so I think that's where Lindley's right, being able to <clears throat> identify that, okay, the person is it's easy to make the yeah. mistake of thinking that the Holy Spirit's anointing, for example, is God's endorsement of their character. Yeah. No, yeah. the anointing's not the endorsement of God's character. The calling is not his endorsement of the character. Even the fruit is not the endorsement of the character of a person. The character of a person is the only endorsement. And then over here is the ministry. And actually that ministry, we, there is a place, I think, and, and a responsibility for movements, for other leaders and so on, to actually say to individuals, 
when they have been, ex you know, things have come into the light that have, that it is very clear that they have been behaving in ways that have damaged others, that actually we say, okay, now the ministry, mm -hmm. that's going to take a long time for trust to be built again. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a long time yeah. of trust building before you are ever back to where you yeah. where you were. I don't mm -hmm. know what you guys think. Oh, yeah, I, I, think, I think that's so, so true. And I think culture is built on all the little behavioral things that we do and allow as a leader. Mm. And, you know, that can go adrift and become toxic, as we know. And, you know, culture takes time to build. So sometimes there's dysfunction that comes in on a very gradual level. Mm -hmm. And maybe the the leadership is expressed to several different members of your church or your leadership team. And sometimes these people don't know that they're being treated in a certain way that somebody else is being treated. Mm -hmm. And and so there's something about a culture that's built that can lead to this level of dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And if it continues and it's not stopped in its tracks, then it can obviously blow up and be very damaging to the body of Christ and to many victims and you know, then there's the whole, wow, trust is broken completely and we start again. And, and so the, there is something in the dynamic where the, there is um, a culture that's built in a, a leader that thinks I'm above the law, I'm above being challenged, and it's my way or the highway. And if you tell anyone else about what I've told you, then mm. you're gossiping. You're dishonoring. And you're dishonoring. Yeah. And you as a leader, because of your power that, and your the authority and the role that God's given you, you can whisper and it's heard like a shout. Absolutely right. And so if if we take that on board, then there can be just a filtering of intimidation that comes even with that. True. So true. You love what you're saying, Kate. This mm, misinterpretation also. or misuse of the culture of honor. Yep. Where we have muted hmm. people. Yeah. Inadvertently muted them by saying anything that smells of criticism or gossip or whatever. Or even question. Or even a question mm -hmm. of the leader's behavior or whatever. Decisions. Decisions. Mm -hmm. Is dishonor, you can't dishonor, therefore the body is felt muted. Yes. And I want to really challenge this thing about gossip. You know, I've grown up with, you know, you must not gossip. I 100% agree with that. Gossip is not healthy for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and it's damaging. The However, we need to be, have pathways of communication around mm. honest facts. Right. Yes. And I believe that the, the, the gossip has been twisted to mute people and control people. You can't gossip about that leader or you can't tell anybody about that because that will then be gossip. If you look at the true definition mm -hmm. of gossip, gossip is communicating facts that have not been proven to be true. Wow about a person. If I'm having an experience where I'm being spiritually abused, physically abused, or emotionally abused, or sexually abused, or sexually abused, that's no longer that's not qualified as gossip. No. That is my reality. And my, the facts are the facts. So I believe we really do need to create a new way of thinking mm -hmm. around Honest and honesty and truth in the areas of how we are experiencing things. Yeah. But because that's that is fact to us. Now, if we feel like we can't go to somebody because I'm going to be dishonoring, I can't do that, or I'm going to be gossiping, or I can't do that. So therefore I'm sitting there mm -hmm. in this abusive situation with no power. Yeah. We have to just that's cancel culture, and as far as I'm concerned, we're going to cancel that culture. Yeah. Start a new godly way of creating safe mm -hmm. pathways for people to express their truth, their, not their truth, but their experience yeah. in a way where they won't be victimized because they've spoken out. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And I think the body of Christ has got a lot of work to do 
yeah. in creating pathways of, that are more honouring than our false honour. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I think it goes yes. actually Good. all the way back to Luther when, you know, he nailed those treaties to the, you know, which was about Don't. actually cr- removing that separation between laity and clergy. Yeah. And yet, and to a large extent, we still have the the honour of leaders as the clergy, and I'm just laity. I'm just a, I'm just a person in the team, or I'm just a person in the church, and we and we perceive there to be the separation and this difference, and there's this difference to leaders that has become ungodly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and actually, the Reformation was about doing away with that. Mm-hmm. So. All together, we need to come much more into a place of we are his kids. What manner of love is this that we should be called children of God? Yeah. Not the that we, we would be the children and the leaders, you know? Right. And so we're actually all sons and daughters together. Yeah. And I think if we can capture that we are brothers, sisters, on a journey together, uh, it will dismantle a lot of that. Mm. And sure, we honour one another, mm-hmm. but you don't honour people with their title. Right. That's just a word, right? You honour yeah. people because of who they are. Yeah. yeah. Who they are in God and who they are to you. And there's a mis- it's a mistake to think that you, you can't say anything about someone because that's dishonouring. Mm-hmm. And But if you're ever feeling in that place of, you know, if you're feeling like I'm trapped, Mm. Yeah. And I've something's happening, and I can't say anything. Yeah. Then understand you are in a controlling relationship. Yeah. And that it's ungodly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, it doesn't matter how amazing or how famous or how uh, you know well known the person that you're feeling that from is. Uh, you have an opportunity to speak out. And I just want to encourage you if you're in that place, mm. you know, find someone yeah. to tell what's happening. Because they're, you're not gossiping. It's, no. ha- it's happening, right? Yeah. That's not gossip. That's truth. So that's yeah. happening. You're not being dishonoring. You're mm. actually being honoring of yourself and actually ultimately honoring of that person and the people that they lead because that will become an opportunity for future growth mm. for everyone. Mm. Yeah. So I just want to speak to you and say you're free yeah. to speak. Mm. Good. The body of Christ needs to be free mm. to speak. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. Mm. And I always mm. remind myself of that little statement that honor is actually honesty. Mm. Mm. Honor is honoring mm. not only myself, but is honoring mm. each other to be truly authentic mm. and be able to be transparent with one another. Yeah. Speak in the truth in love. And um, but yeah, it's it's so true that that sometimes the power imbalance Mm. will silence somebody. And I loved what you brought out about how we've become aware of people that have been victims of any kind of abuse, spiritual abuse, even if it's been just very little and an insidious, but over a long period of time, people can suffer with post-traumatic stress disorder um, and just fear around leaders fear of any godly authority yeah because it's tainted their experience Mm. so you know we are very cognizant that yes we could do a lot more work and you know as catch the fire we love freedom ministry transformation of the heart and i think you know it's it's actually encouraging anyone that we know that has been through this to to have a dialogue of of beginning to trust somebody that, whether it's a, a professional counselor or a minister who can and do do freedom ministry of any any sort, to be able to help that person see how much a leader has misrepresented the heart of the father. Yeah, and I think that is the that's the good news actually. Mm. That there is a way out, even yes. if it's very very painful, and we want to validate that in mm. people that they've had that. Mm. Love that, you know, and that is is one of the pillars of our movement, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Being able to embrace that journey of healing. Yeah. I also want to say, I know we're talking about the body of Christ and the Catch a Fire movement here, but, you know, when I my first two jobs in the workplace, in the marketplace, were abusive. Mm-hmm. When I look mm. back now, yeah, there was emotional abuse, 
I had one um, boss that would throw uh, chairs across the room mm-hmm. if I made an error. Wow. wow. Um, and all these, you know, and, um, forma- formation, the formation of what authority looks like in, in the marketplace was formed for me with abusive style. Yeah. yeah. And it certainly put a resilience in me, I can tell you that, <laughs> to be able to withstand and notice. But it also meant that it took me a couple of years after that to go through, you know, rep- forgiving Mm-hmm. my boss in yeah, my workplace yeah, yeah. and taking that wound of fear of authority out of me. And I think the authority wound, mm-hmm. the parent wound, the authority wound mm-hmm. in us, mm-hmm. the father wants to heal that. Come on. Because I wonder, and this is not 100% applicable to <clears throat> every situation, are some of us susceptible? Yeah. To come under and be silenced when we have an abusive leader, yes, because of our yeah. our authority wound, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I just wonder whether there are some excellent leaders in the potential stage that miss out on their f- stepping into leadership because they have this yeah. vow or lie that says. If that's what leadership is, I don't want to be it. Yeah. If 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 I step into leadership, I fear I will become an abusive leader mm-hmm. because we've had leadership modelled in that way yeah. and even in marketplace. Mm-hmm. And so I think the transformation journey is so key, like you were saying, Duncan. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness, repentance, healing, getting the trauma out of us whether you're in the marketplace mm. or whether you're in the body of Christ, it's the same. Yeah. Yes. The authority wound is, is, I think, applies to all of mm-hmm. us in some no, way, definitely. shape or form. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really good, Lindley. Yeah. And, you know, you've reminded me as you were sharing there of how many, many people within ministries that have a high value on healing of life's hurts or inner healing or you know counseling and so on actually can experience tremendous hurt when their leaders weaponize hmm. healing of life's hurts yes yes and you know there are people that have been in ministries that have a high value on healing life's hurts and they have been uh, they have experienced pain and the consequences of their leaders um, making decisions, walking out behaviors that have been detrimental for the team. And then as an individual, they've come to their leaders to confront their leaders in a loving way, in a, in a way to hope to point this out because they're feeling trapped by it and they want, to, it, they want it to end. And, and maybe it might even be at work, mm. you know, but then the leader has turned it on them mm. and said, no, 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 no. This is your problem. You need to deal with this issue because I can see that you've got this wrong response and that Mm -hmm. issue and you've judged this person in the past and you've done this in the past. So actually, and the person's come away being completely gaslit and feeling like, oh my goodness, I went to share with my leader that they've been hurting me and their leader turned it and flipped it on me and now I'm the one who's got the problem and I've got to go and get some inner healing. Mm -hmm. Can you talk into that? Yeah, I think that's one of the great tragedies of, you, of yeah. our inner healing journey and yeah. the, the message of transformation yeah. is that it does create that opportunity yeah. for people to be, we- for it to be weaponized as you you know, indicated, or words you used. And there's a, it's such a, sh- it's such a tragedy that, that people experience that. Yeah. But, you know, and I've experienced that where, but it's, I think we need to realize that there's always two people. Mm. In any given relationship, in any given dynamic, there's always two. Yeah. And it's very, very rare that there's only one party at fault. Mm. Yep. You know, you look at them, you know, you just use the marriage relationship, you know, our relationship. Mm. You know, when there's stuff going on and upset, you know, I guarantee you we're both involved. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we're both so responsible we're both for hurting each other. Certainly right? feels that way. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so I think I, leaders use that tool to protect themselves. Mm. Because actually what's probably happening is that the person's coming to them and, and is confronting them on an issue in their lives. Yeah. And whether they're aware of it or not, um, their response is defensive. Yeah. Right. And so defense is to actually push back yeah. and make it that person's problem. Yeah. Mm. Right. And so again, that circles back to the humility conversation wow. of leaders that, you know, as as hard and as frustrating and as sometimes as like this, you know, what kernel of truth is there that this person's bringing to me? And even if there's nothing, what does it cost you as a leader to listen, validate, mm. and help with journey with a person? Yeah. yeah. Actually, you diminish yourself as a leader when you weaponize in the healing. Gosh. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It's just, wow. <clears throat> it's, I love what you just said, Stu, you know, you – and validate yourself as a leader. In fact, you promote toxic leadership. Yeah. Mm. And it's about self protecting, as mm. you yeah. say. And um, yeah. I think self awareness in this is very important. It yes. is. As, as leaders, we need to become self aware of when we are armoring up on the inside. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. When are we taking a, you can feel it you can. rising in your heart. Yeah. And your body may even break out in a sweat or trembling or start yeah. trembling because mm. you're beginning to armor up because you you are perceiving a threat mm-hmm. so if we are self-aware enough to realize in the midst of somebody sharing when you said that that really hurt me and when you did that I felt this yeah and you're starting to armor up if we just have the presence of mind to coach ourselves off the ledge yeah. mm. and the moment and go, oh, I can just see I'm armoring up right now and I'm starting to get out my wow. my hammer and I want to smack that person right over the head with it verbally. Mm-hmm. And you feel that rising up and you're like, no, it's okay. You are loved. You are okay. It's good. It's all good. Just calm down. Receive it. Just be, be, be cool, be cool, be cool mm. and listen and acknowledge that person. You know, a lot yeah. of people just want to be heard, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And it's not going to, co- like Stuart said it so beautifully, it's, what is it going to cost you to say, I I hear what you're saying and I am so sorry that my actions and my behaviours and my whatever has, yeah. has, co- has hurt you um, and then just let it be there. And please forgive me. Please forgive me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. See, it, 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 yeah. If a leader can do that, then it just disarms everything. Yes. And that other person feel, feels heard. Because you were talking about there's two people in this relationship. Mm. And I think what is it that will make us feel so intimidated by our leaders mm. um, that we can't speak out? We we suddenly get afraid or I can't say that, this that's dishonoring. And, um, you know, we can all look back at, times where we've been in our workplace or even in a church situation with any leader, whether it was just a um, a cell group leader or a house group leader that, that hurt us, w- what was it that made us freeze mm. and not say, I really can't listen to that at the moment. That That is hurtful. What you're saying is hurting me right now. And I, I think, again, it's back to culture. So, you know, our aim really is just to become aware of what this looks like for everybody. Um, and, and so we, we can stop a hijack, basically, because, mm. you know, humility has no worthy opponent. Mm. You know, if we can remain and live as humble leaders, then even if someone feels like they're attacking us, we can separate, well, I didn't like the way you said it, but there was a grain of truth in what mm. you said. You know, and it just turns that power thing around. Yeah. Well, I think the power imbalance is very real. Like you can't get away from it. No, the fact that that you you know you're ch- you know for us as church leaders, um, we do provide opportunities to be on different teams. We do provide opportunities to for people to speak. We do you know uh, whether we like it or not. Mm-hmm. You know we make decisions that affect people's lives. Yeah, yeah. And so people are very aware of that. Yeah. And that dynamic can actually 
cause people to be very careful about what they say, how they say it. Yeah. And because of that, often the volume at which they come to you with can be greater than it needs to be. Yes. Mm. Right? Because they're they're speaking They're intense yes, they're, and upset. They're or... intense and upset, but they're also speaking to yeah. power. Correct. So they're right. fearful. So they're fearful. Yes. So got to... So they're kind of like, well, I better be strong then. I've got to, you know. Yeah. And so they gird themselves up, and and but then as a leader, you get hit with the, mm. yeah. the, the intensity, yeah. that's out of balance with what the situation is. Yeah. You know, and we need to, as leaders, learn and understand that that's a dynamic that it's in play. We actually are powerful in that dynamic. We have more. Yeah. So how do you wear your power? Yeah. Ooh. Do you wear it lightly? Yeah. Do you realize that you only have it because Jesus gave it to you? That's right. Yeah. You know, That's and right. you're and you're leading whatever you're leading on his behalf. Yeah. You know, it's actually not yours. Yeah. It's his. Mm-hmm. And, you know, wearing your authority and your power lightly uh, and the way it changes how you relate to the people that you're yeah. leading yeah. And, okay. and means that they, you know, you can, they can speak to you. But I think it's a it's it's a bit naive to think that we can remove the power imbalance. Mm. Yeah, it just is. Yeah. But how leaders wear their power is very important. That's really good. That's really mm. well said, Stuart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm so sorry. Just goes so far, doesn't it? Yes. I was wrong. Yeah. And clearly, I don't understand fully how. You, my actions and my behaviors and my choices have led to you being hurt right now. But thank you so much for coming and sharing that with me. Mm. And if we can, you know, in a safe way, yeah. perhaps if you feel that maybe we need some others to help interpret, you know, I want light to understand so that I can learn from this, mm. so that I can help you to, to be healed mm-hmm. in this moment because I'm truly owning the responsibility of my poor choices, my poor behaviors, and my poor decisions. Yeah. And then that way, Jesus can be glorified even in the midst of yeah. my disaster. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, will you please forgive me? Yeah. And when, when we take ownership and responsibility for how we have actually hurt people, yeah. we go a very, very long way to helping them in their healing. Yes, yeah. yeah. we do. We do. And, yeah. we do. you know, yeah. That's yeah. He, healthy and supernatural is yeah. what we're going for here. Everybody. Yeah. So. And um, yeah, so great conversation today. Yeah. There's always so much more. So much more. <laughs> but thank you for helping unpack it. And, you know, yeah. just keep listening as we roll out some of these discussions because we're all gra- grappling with the same dynamics. We want to grow. We want to remain humble and teachable so that Jesus is truly glorified and he's the one that builds the church, not us as unhealthy leaders (laughs) on a journey. So God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in today.